Welcome to theCUBE's continuing coverage of AMD's fourth generation Epic launch, along with the way that Dell has integrated this technology into its PowerEdge server lines. We're in for an interesting conversation today. Uh, today I'm joined by Dilip Ramachandran, Senior Director of Marketing at AMD, and Jurgen Zimmerman. Uh, Jurgen is Principal SAP Solutions Performance Performance Benchmarking Engineer at Dell. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Thank you, David. Nice to be here. Nice to meet you too. Welcome to theCUBE. You will officially be CUBE alumni after this. Uh, Dilip, let's start with you. Uh, what, what's this all about? Tell us about AMD's recent launch and the importance of it. Thank, thanks, David. Uh, I'm excited to actually talk to you today. Um, AMD uh, had our um, fourth generation Epic launch uh, last month in November. Uh, and as part of that uh, fourth generation Epic launch, um, we announced uh, you know, industry leading performance um, based on uh, 96 cores uh, based on Gen, Zen 4 architecture and uh, new interfaces, uh, PCI Gen 5, as well as DDR5, uh, incredible amount of memory bandwidth, memory capacity supported, um, and, and a whole lot of other features as well. So we announced this product, uh, we launched it in November last month, and we've been um, closely working with Dell on a number of benchmarks that we'd love to talk to you more about today. So just for some context, when was the last release of this scale? Uh, so when, when, was, when, was, when was the third generation released? How long ago? Uh, the third generation Epic was uh, launched uh, in uh, Q1 of uh, 2021. Um, so, uh, you know, it was uh, you know, almost uh, 18 nine to 24 months ago. And, um, you know, since then we've made a tremendous jump in terms of, uh, you know, the fourth generation Epic in terms of number of cores. Uh, so third generation Epic supported 64 cores, fourth generation Epic supports uh, 96 cores. And these are new cores, the Zen 4 cores, the fourth, fourth generation of Zen cores. Um, so very high performance, uh, new interfaces and, and, and really, uh, you know, world-class performance. Excellent. Well, we'll go into greater detail in a moment, but let's start out, let's, let's go to Jurgen. Um, tell us about uh, the, the, the testing that you've been involved with to kind of prove out the benefits of this new AMD architecture? Yeah, well, the testing is SAP standard performance benchmark, the SUB-SD two-tier. And this is more or less uh, industry standard benchmark that is used to size your service for the needs of SAP. Actually, every SAP customers always ask the vendors about the SAP benchmark and the SUBS values of their service. And I should have asked you uh, before, but give us a little give us a little bit of your background working with SAP. Have you been doing this for longer than a week? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I do this for about twenty years now. Started with Sun Microsystems, and interestingly, um, in the year two thousand three, two thousand four, I started working with AMD servers on SAP with Linux, and afterwards ported the SAP application to Solaris AMD, also with AMD. So I have a lot of tradi tradition with SAP and AMD benchmarks and doing this ever since then. So give us some more, uh, some more detail on the results of the, the recent testing. And, and if you can, tell us why we should care. <laughs> okay, the, the recent results actually all also surprised myself. Um, they were so good. So I initially installed the benchmark kit and couldn't believe that the server is just getting or hitting idle by the numbers I saw. So I cranked up the numbers and reached results that are most likely double the last generation, so Zen 3 generation. And that even passed almost all eight socket systems out there. So if you want to have the same SAP performance, you can just use a two socket AMD server instead of any four or eight socket servers out there. And this is a tremendous um, saving in energy. So what is that? So you, you just mentioned um, savings in terms of uh, power consumption, which, which is a huge consideration. Um, but what are the uh, what, what are the sort of end user results that this delivers? 
in terms of real world performance? How is it? How is a human being at the end of a a, a computer going to notice something like this? So actually, the results are like that you get almost 150,000 users concurrently accessing the system and get their results back from SAP within one second response time. 150,000 users, you said? One, 150,000 users in parallel. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's amazing, and 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 uh, I, I think it's interesting to note that, um, and I'll probably say this a, a couple of times. Uh, you just referenced uh, third generation um, uh, Epic uh, architecture, and yep. uh, there are still there are a lot of folks out there who are two generations back. Not everyone is religiously updating every eighteen months, and so for a fair number of SAP environments. This is an even more dramatic increase. Is that is that a fair thing to say? Yeah, I just looked up yesterday the numbers um, from generation one of Epic, and this was at about twenty eight thousand users. So we are five times the performance now within Fantastic. four years. Yeah, great. So Dilip, let's let's dig a little more into um, into the uh, Epic. Uh, architecture and uh, and I'm specifically also curious about the you mentioned PCIe Gen 5 or 5.0 um, and uh, and all of the components that plug into that uh, you mentioned I think faster DDR uh, talk about that talk about how all of the components work together to make this uh, when 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 Dell comes out with a PowerEdge server to make it so much more powerful absolutely. So, uh, you know, to, just to spend a little bit more time on this particular benchmark, the uh, SAP sales and distribution benchmark, it's a yeah. widely used benchmark in the industry to basically, um, you know, look at how do I get the most performance out of my uh, system for a variety of SAP business suite applications. And, and we touched upon it earlier, right? Uh, we are able to uh, beat a performance of four socket and eight socket servers out there. And, you know, it saves energy, it saves costs, better TCO uh, for the data center. So we're really excited uh, to be able to support more users uh, in a single server um, and, and beating all the other uh, dual socket and four socket combinations out there. Now, how does it, how do we get there? How did we get there, right? Uh, is, is more the important question. Um, so as part of our fourth generation Epic, um, we obviously upgraded our CPU core to, to provide much better single thread performance per core. And, and at the socket level, um, you know, when we pack in 96 cores, you need to be able to feed these cores, um, you know, from a memory standpoint. So what we did was we went to 12 channels of memory, uh, and these are DDR5 memory channels. So obviously you get much better bandwidth, um, higher speed of the memory with DDR5, you know, starting at 4,800 um, megahertz. And um, you're able to also now able to have more channels to be able to send the data from the memory uh, into the CPU subsystem, which is very critical to keep the CPUs busy and active and get the performance out. So that's on the memory side. On the data side, um, you know, we do have PCIe Gen 5 and any data oriented applications uh, that take, uh, you know, data either from the PCIe drives or the network cards, um, you know, that utilize Gen 5, uh, you know, that are available in the industry today, uh, you can actually really get uh, data into the system through um, the PCIe IO, um, either through them uh, again through uh, the disk or or through um, the NIC card as well. So so those are other ways to actually also feed the the CPU subsystem with, with data to be processed by by the uh, CPU complex. So we are again very excited to see all of this coming together and. As they say, proofs in the pudding. Um, we, you know, you again talked about it. How over generation after generation, we've increased the performance, and and now with um, with our fourth generation Epic, we are absolutely um, leading world class performance on the SAP sales and distribution benchmark. Dilip, I have another question for you, and this may be um, it, it may be a bit of a power edge and beyond question. Um, what are you what are you seeing or what are you anticipating in terms of end user perception when they go to buy a new server? Uh, obviously, server is a is a very loose term and they can be configured in a bunch of different ways. Um, but is there a discussion about um, ROI and TCO that's particularly critical 
um, because people are going to ask, well, wait a minute, if it's more expensive than the last one that I bought, uh, am I getting enough bang for my buck? Is that is that going to be part of the conversation, especially around power and cooling and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, um, every data center decision maker uh, has to ask the question, why should I upgrade? Um, should I stay with legacy hardware um, or should I go into uh, the latest and greatest uh, that AMD uh, offers? Um, and and the, the advantages that the new generation products bring is uh, much better performance uh, at much better energy consumption levels, as well as much better performance per dollar level. So when you do the upgrade, you're actually getting, um, you know, savings in terms of performance per dollar, as well as um, saving in space, uh, because you can consolidate, uh, you know, your work into fewer servers, because we have more cores. Uh, as we talked about, you have, eight, you know, if you typically you might do it on a four or eight socket, which is, socket server, which is really expensive, you can consolidate it down to a two socket server, which is, which is uh, much cheaper as also, it's also for maintenance costs, it's much easy, uh, lower maintenance costs as well. All of this uh, performance, power, um, maintenance costs, all of that translate into better TCO, right? So lower, all of these high performance, lower power, and then lower maintenance costs translate to much better TCO for, for the uh, end user. And that's an important equation that all uh, customers pay attention to. And uh, we, we, you know, we love to work with them and, and demonstrate uh, those TCO benefits to them. Jurgen, talk to us more in general about uh, what Dell does from a PowerEdge perspective uh, to make sure that Dell is delivering the best infrastructure possible for SAP in general. I mean, I, I assume that this is a, a big responsibility of yours is making sure that <laughs> making sure that the stuff runs properly, and if not, fixing it. So, so tell us about that relationship between Dell and SAP. Yeah, for Dell and SAP, actually, we're more or less partners with SAP. We have people sitting in SAP's Linux lab and working in a cooperative with SAP, also with a Linux partners like Suzy and Red Hat. And we all were in constant exchange about what's new in Linux, what's new on our side. And we're we're all a big family here. So when so when the new the, the, the new architecture comes out and uh, and they, they send it to Jurgen, uh, the boys back at the plant, as they say, or the factory <laughs> to use Formula One terms, are 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 waiting with bated breath to hear what Jurgen says about the results. So um, just, just kind of, kind of recap again. You know, the, the the specific benchmarks that you were running. Tell us about that again. Yeah, the specific benchmark is the sub sales and distribution benchmark, mm -hmm. and for SAP, this is the benchmark um, that's need that needs to be tested, and it shows the performance of the whole system. So, in contrast to benchmarks that only check if the CPU is running. Very good. This tests the whole system up from the network stack, from the storage stack, the memory subsystem, and the OS on the running on the CPUs. Okay, which makes perfect sense since Dell is delivering an integrated system and not just CPU technology. You know, on yeah. that subject, um, Dilip, do uh, do you have any insights into performance numbers that you're hearing about with uh, Gen four? Epic on uh, uh, for other database environments. Yeah, uh, we uh, we have actually uh, worked together with Dell on a variety of benchmarks, both uh, on the latest uh, fourth generation Epic processors, as well as the, the preceding one, the third generation Epic processors, and published a bunch of world records uh, on database. Uh, particularly, I would say uh, TPC H, uh, TPC X V, uh, as well as TPC X H S and TPC X I O T. So a number of TPC related benchmarks that uh, really, um, you know, showcase, uh, you know, performance for database and related, uh, um, you know, applications. So, um, you know, and, and we, you know, Dell, Dell has, uh, we've collaborated very closely with Dell on these benchmarks and uh, and published a number of them um, already. And, uh, you know, a number of them are, you know, world records as well. So, uh, again, we're excited to collaborate with Dell on uh, on the SAP uh, sales and distribution benchmark, as well as other other benchmarks that are related to database. 
Well, speaking of other benchmarks, uh, uh, here at the Cube, we're going to be talking to actually quite a few people looking at this fourth generation Epic launch uh, from a whole bunch of different angles. Uh, you two gentlemen have shed light on some uh, some really good pieces of that puzzle. I want to thank you for being on the Cube today. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us here on the Cube. Stay tuned for continuing Cube coverage of AMD's fourth generation Epic launch and Dell PowerEdge strategy to leverage it.